Hello, my name is Neil Houston. I am the GP clinical lead for the Scottish Patient Safety Programme in Primary Care, which was launched in March 2013 and has spread to over a thousand GP practices across NHS Scotland. This video, which I'm delighted to introduce, is uh, by Carl DeVette, who developed the trigger tool, which is a process by which you can look at your clinical records in a structured way, a structured and quick way, in order to identify patient safety incidents and therefore allow practices to identify areas that they might wish to carry out improvements in to make care safer. The tool has been very effectively used by uh, over 70% of practices in Scotland and has been found to be very effective identifying a range of patient safety incidents and giving practice clear focus for improvement. The trigger tool has three steps to it and in your packs, if you bear with me, if you look for this form please. So at the top it says trigger review summary report. So the trigger review summary report shows you the three steps, and there's two in the front and one at the back. Now for purposes of the national program and for purposes of QAF, what you're going to be asked to do is to complete two of these reports over the period of a year. So this form that you have in your hand, this is the form that will help you to meet the necessary criteria. And what I hope to do in the next few minutes is talk you through the form and explain what the steps are and while I'm doing that, at the same time explain what the trigger review method is as well. So, is there anyone that doesn't have this form at the moment? Okay. So the first step is just planning to do your review. So at the top, you will put your name, you will put your practice, your professional group, the date that you review, and the patient group that you choose from. And there's a few groups that you can choose from. I think I've put a slide about that. Yep. In QAF, they've conveniently given us a number, and for the patient safety program there is a huge overlap. So there is a choice. So the first thing you do in your practice when you prepare to do the review is you decide what patient group you want to choose 25 patient records from. So for example, I've circled two or three of them in blue, um, and in red, uh, the ones in blue are the ones that I would have chosen myself when I'm going to do this in my own practice, just because they work well, but in all fairness, any group can work well, and it tends to be that the sicker and older the group that you choose, it just tends that you find more things when you go and do your review. So you would write down there, I selected patients older than 75, that's prescribed warfarin, and then look at those patients in your surgery and choose 25 names. Once you've done that, you're ready to move on to the review. And this is where I will pause for a moment and explain what the trigger review method is. So you will see that there is a number of so-called triggers listed one below the other. And we'll talk about now. So, I don't know about you guys, but for me, before I call my next patient in, I'll very often look at the last record or two, just to quickly get a, an idea of what's been happening in that patient's life before I call them in. Also, as part of the contract, we've got to do medication reviews, um, and sometimes when we get discharge letters, you'll know yourself, you'd have to do a little bit of fishing. And all of this is looking at your own records. So the trigger review method, although it's got a fancy name, is really only a focused, structured, rapid, and active review of your records. So what we're asking you to do is to take a little bit of time Take this bundle of your records and take this approach to quickly look through them to find what we call patient safety incidents. The rationale for this, it's a beautiful um, venue out here, but the slide that I normally use is the Kruger National Park. Has any of you been on safari before? No? A few lucky ones, not so many. The problem with the safari, as you can see, is that it takes place in a country that, or, or, or in a park that is as big as a country, 
And when you've saved your money and you get there, you only have a week or two to get through all of that, which is very, very difficult. So you have to have a plan to make sure that you can see, for example, the big five, which includes the lion and the elephant and that sort of thing. And in the same way, if you think of my own practice, which is a tiny practice, we have 3,000 patients, but if you think of the records and the number of years that those patients have been with us, we've probably got more than 100,000 patient years. And all that we know for sure is that somewhere in the records, there's evidence that sometimes care didn't go quite the way I would have wanted it to be, and that sometimes things happened that maybe could have been prevented. So for me, to go through every single record is just simply too time consuming. So this method helps me to go through it rapidly. And that is where the triggers come in. So if you will bear with me with this analogy of the safari park, if you've got the day, you decide that your triggers are going to be to find a lion, that you're going to look by the waterhole, you're going to look by the river, and you're going to look in the road where the lions were last night, because lions don't move very much, quite lazy, sleep 23 hours, and you often see them just where they were before. In the same way, when you look at your record, you're not going to look at everything, you look at a certain part of the record, you look at three months, and all that you look for is for whether the patient frequently attended, whether medication was stopped, whether the patient was admitted or went to out of hours, and if you find these so-called triggers, that makes you pause and for a moment ask yourself, do I think that there was a patient safety incident at that point? And that's why we call it focused and structured. So this is my sister. This is trigger number one. She's at the dam, or the loch as it would be here, and she's looking for lions, and there's none. And the same thing happens when you look through your record, as you quickly scan through, it might be that the patient that you've just looked at hasn't even been to see you for the last three months. Well, if they haven't been to see you and they haven't been to hospital, there's not much chance anything could have gone wrong or better. So then, you swiftly move on. So this would be us driving along the river. It's a bit difficult to see, but you can just about make out the green bit with the water um, in there. And then a little bit further, we have another trigger, and this time we do have um, what we came to see. And the same thing, when you go through this report, is that although you might find some triggers, you're not expecting to find a patient safety incident every single time. But if you do, that's when you want to stop and pause, and you want to go down your form and just capture that information and write it down. My dad sent me this slide. Um, that's not him on top of the Land Rover. Although, uh, a few years ago in Botswana, I believe something very similar like that happened to him as well with the leopard. I include this slide because as we've been doing the trigger reviews with different practices, occasionally a practice will come back to us and they will say, well, we found nothing. And that's quite dispiriting to hear for a number of reasons. But a few weeks ago, while I was interviewing a practice nurse um, that between the lines had found nothing, I reflected that back to her, which is what we do as GPs, and I said, well, how do you feel about finding nothing? And she told me, I didn't find nothing. I felt outward actually pretty good. And I thought that was just such a wonderful sentiment. When you're reviewing your records, it might be that if you go through this process, you come away thinking after 25 records, well, I didn't really find very much. But on the other hand, what you do find is opportunities during your review to sometimes tidy up records. It gives you a feel for your patient journeys. And what I would say is it would be extremely strange if you do two or more reviews and you don't find something at some point during the reviews. As a general rule of thumb, in the practices we've worked with, you can normally expect to find anything between 10 and 20 triggers, usually one to three patient safety incidents, and probably one in 10 practices won't find something with their first try. So, coming back to the form, we briefly talked about a patient safety incident. 
might refer to that. At the bottom, there's a definition of that. Um, if you want to have a quick look at that, it says an incident that caused harm or could have caused harm to a patient as a result of their interaction with healthcare. Really, another way to say that is we're asking you to look for things in the record that could potentially have been better. I think it's, a, it's maybe useful to give you an example or two because people ask us, well, what is it that you find? Give us an example that, that that makes sense. So I'll give you an example from my own surgery. Unfortunately, I have a few. Um, we had a patient uh, that's been on methotrexate for a few years now, and I noticed that MCV had increased, which was one of the triggers I used at that time. And then when I looked into it further, I realized she had never been prescribed folic acid. So that was something easy that I could fix. And then when I did an audit, I found, unfortunately, there was another one like that in the practice, and I could fix that as well. Um, there's a few other examples, and we'll talk about that as the session develops. So, I think we're just about ready to start um, either the individual or the group work. Just a few things to remember when you review. When you're in your practices, you're only going to do a maximum of 25 records. It's supposed to be quick. You're going to take three or four minutes per record, but never more than 20 minutes. If you're still staring at the screen after 20 minutes, you should have moved on already. You only review three months in each record. Three full calendar months. Remember, it's your review. If you're in doubt whether you should write it down, don't. At the end of the day, you're trying to find something that you can make use of to improve things in your practice. You should also remember that some of the records that you go through won't have triggers. And even if there are triggers, there might not be patient safety incidents. The first question, and one of the more important ones, is do I use a form for every patient? And the answer is no. You use this one form for your one review, and you document all 25 cases that you go through on this one form. That's it. For purposes of the program and the contract, you complete one form, and you complete it twice over a period of 12 months. Okay. The third issue is, you're all right that the number of boxes next to each trigger doesn't add up to 25. And there's a reason for that, because we're not interested to make the one trigger in the one file. As you find them, you just stick along. It doesn't matter if it was in number one or in number seven, as you find the triggers, just make the tick. I've never seen anyone so far run out of boxes. That would be very unusual. And that brings me to the fourth question, and that is, what do you do if you find six patient safety incidents? Well, if you do, you give yourself either a clap on the back, because you've done really well, or you're a bit paranoid, or you're a bit unlucky, because either most people will not find six, or if you find five, and the reason there's five, my advice to you would be, turn the page around and get cracking on what you're going to do with what you've just found. Why would you want to find more than five things? That gives you plenty of things to do. 